This is a pharmacology review for the NCLEX RN. Please excuse any mispronunciations of words. First, we'll start with antimicrobials. They are either bactericidal or bacterial-static. Bactericidal micro antimicrobials are agents that kill microorganisms, whereas the bacterial-static are agents that prevent the microorganisms from multiplying and growing. First, we're going to start with aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are a bactericidal agent, meaning they kill microorganisms. They are primarily used for gram-negative organisms um, in serious infections, but have been known to be used for gram-positive organisms. However, because of how toxic they are in comparison to other drugs, they are not as likely to be used for the gram-positive organisms. Common infections aminoglycosides have been used for have been against E. coli, Klebacilia, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Common drugs in this category include gentamicin, streptomycin, um, and neomycin, as you can see listed. Notice either myosin or sin is in the ending of the word. That's a good indicator. Streptomycin is also used to treat tuberculosis in some cases. The adverse effects of an aminoglycoside often are ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Ototoxicity um, would often lead to uh, symptoms of vertigo, ringing of the ears, balance and hearing issues. You would want to check the eighth cranial nerve for damage. Nephrotoxicity or damage to the um, kidneys you, uh, you're going to want to check renal function tests such as BUN, creatinine, creatinine clearance, and make sure to keep a check on the intake and output of the kidneys. Um, there's also neuromuscular blockade as a possibility. Observe for headache, lethargy, tremor, and paresthesia, which is tingling, prickling, or numbness of a person's skin. Um, Please note that it is contraindicated for patients with renal problems to be on this medication, and if they are, they should be on a reduced dose. Now we'll move on to vancomycin, which is another bacterial cytal drug. Um, vancomycin, even though it appears to be an aminoglycoside because of the myosin at the end of the name, is not related to any of the drug. Um, and it is usually reserved for severe infections because of how toxic it is and um, how it can easily get into a toxicity range. If given in an IV infusion, it is usually done so for a staph infection that has become resistant to methicillin or um, if the patient is allergic to penicillin. If it is given PO, it is done so for a C. diff of the colon um, infection that is uh, developed because of antibiotic usage. Vancomycin should never be given in IM injection because of how irritating it is. Um, adverse effects of vancomycin are much like the aminoglycosides um, in that uh, you, you would want to look for ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. So check the eighth cranial nerve, um, you know, hearing loss, hearing damage, uh, balance issues, as well as monitor renal function. Also, Redman syndrome is a commonly um, seen adverse effect. Uh, this occurs when vancomycin is given too quickly. It causes itching of the head and a red rash around the neck. Um, that is why vancomycin should be given over a period of one hour um, if done by an IV infusion to ensure that it doesn't go in too quickly. Penicillin and other penicillins in the category um, are bacterial cytal. Um, as they inhibit the cell wall synthesis of microorganisms. Um, penicillins are used to treat gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, um, as well as the bacteria that causes syphilis, uh, meningococcus, pneumococcus, streptococcus, and many others of the sort. Please note penicillins are not to be used for uh, treating of viral, yeast, fungi, or rickettsia infections. Examples of penicillin include Penicillin V, um, which is penicillin uh, potassium. Please note that uh, penicillin V potassium should be taken on an empty stomach. Also common are ampicillin uh, uh, and uh, the drug combinations that uh, uh, make Augmentin, which is a, a trade name. Please note that for penicillin, 
um, if a patient has no history of a penicillin allergy, this does not mean that he could not develop an allergy. Allergic reactions are most apt to occur on a second or subsequent exposure to the penicillin um, because the first course of treatment may sensitize the individual to the penicillin and thus subsequent courses of the treatment um, may cause an actual allergic reaction. Uh, commonly seen adverse effects of penicillin um, include uh, hypersensitivity. This is, uh, you're going to want to watch for an allergic reaction, so watch for rash, hives, anaphylaxis, and bronchospasm. If they do occur, do not give any additional doses and notify the physician as soon as possible. Um, in other, uh, in many countries around the world, um, skin tests are done um, quite frequently for patients. This is not the case in the U.S., um, but skin tests have been done for patients who have a questionable history of severe um, or serious penicillin allergies. And uh, patients who are um, quite allergic to penicillin and who must take penicillin can be desensitized via the oral or subcutaneous route. GI upset is um, commonly seen, especially with orally administered penicillin. Um, uh, to best uh, give the, uh, and absorb the penicillin, uh, give oral form one to two hours before or two to three hours bef um, after eating, um, as that uh, helps with the absorption rate. Um, benamide may be given to increase blood levels of penicillin. Um, penicillin is chemically um, incompatible with aminoglycosides. So do not combine them in the IV solution. If you must give them concurrently, administer them in separate sites on the patient and at least an hour apart at dosing time. Uh, penicillin V, uh, the potassium, may be decreased um, in effectiveness if the patient is on oral contraceptives. And uh, penicillin should be used cautiously in persons taking anticoagulants as um, it may increase potential bleeding um, so when given in an IV, assess for signs of phlebitis, which is inflammation of the vein, usually associated with a forming or formed blood clot, um, and make sure to change the IV site every 48 hours. Now we move on to cephalosporins. Cephalosporins are another bactericidal drug category, um, and cephalosporins are used to treat both gram-negative and gram-positive organisms. It comes in four generations of drugs. The first generation of cephalosporins are effective against gram-positive organisms and have a weak effectiveness against the gram-negative. Second generation have an increased effectiveness against the gram-negative organisms than the first generation. The third generation um, are less effective against the gram-positives um, organisms and more so with the gram-negative. And the fourth generation of cephalosporins are effective against both the gram-negative and gram-positive. You will note from the list that um, the majority of the drugs that are cephalosporins have ceph as um, the beginning of their uh, generic name. The um, Adverse effects of cephalosporins include nephrotoxicity, which occurs in high doses when high doses are given, and also a um, penicillin cross allergy um, because cephalosporins are similar in structure to penicillin and thus have similar side effects of penicillin. And um, so patients with penicillin allergy uh, may also be allergic to uh, cephalosporins. So you're going to want to assess the patient for a history of penicillin allergy before you give a cephalosporin.